I've just had some fun flying around at one of the first fields I started to frequent when I first got into this hobby and being out here had me all nostalgic and I started to think what is it about this hobby about FPV quadcopters that had me so hooked and the simple answer to that is building these things yourself and watching them fly at like 100 plus kilometers per hour is just so satisfying there is nothing like it I've always been somebody who likes to DIY things myself and I've been into designing custom frames and the like but I wanted to take it to the next level I wanted to write my own software that runs on these drones so my hope for this video series is to bring you guys along on that engineering process and I want you guys to see the ups and the downs, the excitements and the frustrations of actually undertaking a project such as this. Now I don't want this to be another boring lecture series on YouTube. If you really want to follow this along step by step like a tutorial, I urge you to click the link in the description below and you'll find what you need. But for the video series, I wanted to keep it fresh and exciting. Now my ultimate goal is that for people watching this series, I hope you get inspired to do your own thing just as I'm doing because that is exactly how the FPV technology gets pushed to new limits. It's the community involvement. So with that being said, let's hop in the car and drive back home to the bench where we can get started. Alright, so where do we even begin with this? Well, first off, this is a software project, so let's not get too bogged down in designing the PCB. Instead, let's imagine that our hardware team has built this beautiful circuit board for us, and really it's our job just to write the software for this thing. So whether we're using an F4 chip or a more powerful F7 chip, we're going to have to do the same basic things. First off, we're going to have to read our user input from the receiver, and that could be through an SBUS protocol or whatever Spectrum's using. Then, we're going to have to monitor our battery voltage and current draw, because those are some pretty important numbers for us. We're also going to have to talk to our ESCs through a protocol like OneShot or DShot because we have to control our motors somehow. And lastly, but most importantly, we're going to have to brush up on our theory and design a controller that will actually make this system stable. Now hopefully, when this is all done, we can put it all in a frame and it should fly. So right now, it might look like we have a huge amount on our plate and we have to do so many things in order to get this thing to work. But we can break it down and in each installment of this series, we're going to be focusing on just one thing at a time so that it's more manageable for you guys. So with all of that being said, I hope that you guys are just as excited as I am to start this project. So stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next video.